All right, good morning and welcome to the summer webinar series hosted by MCNC. Uh, my name is John Wharf, and I've also got Gons here with me. And today's session is on Chromebook management. Got just a real short presentation for you as well. We'll be going in and taking a look at a lot of the main features that I wanted to show you guys. So my contact information is up on your screen. Uh, you can always reach us via email. My email address is jwarf at mcnc.org. The goo.gl link there will take you to several trainings, recordings, presentations, things along those lines that I've done in the past on Google Apps. And then I also encourage you to visit the webinar links. Uh, the mcnc.org forward slash cne dash webinars will take you to all of the webinars. As well, we've recorded most all of the webinars and they're available for you. We should be posting several new webinars up on the website later today. Uh, those should be up and available for you to register for next week and so on. Now, I highly encourage you to take a look at them, register, and we'll have more of those coming in the near future as well. So Google Chromebooks, they're taken off by storm, but are you using Google Apps? Now, in order to really utilize Chromebooks to their full potential, you have to have them registered in a Google Apps domain. Whether it's a Google Apps for schools, education, Google Apps for work, Google Apps for nonprofits, whatever the case, it needs to be enrolled in your domain in order to really take full advantage. So here in North Carolina, just in 2014, we had, this is just showing how many districts are using Google Apps for their email. So last year we had two, 69 districts that were using Google Apps for their email. Now. That doesn't stop them from using it for their documents as well. This year alone, we've got 84 districts that are using it for email as well as documents, apps, things along those lines. Now, for us to track Chromebooks, it's a little bit harder. Now, the only thing that I can tell you about the Chromebooks is currently we have, according to AMTR, the Annual Media Technology Report, we have over 224,000 Chromebooks here in the state of North Carolina. Now that's spread all the way from the far west to the far east with Chromebooks that we've got access to all across the state. A lot of those are in one-to-one -one situations, but they're also available in cart set setups as well. The presentation will be available later, so there's some additional resources here that I've uh, got you access to. One is the admin training section of Google's uh, Google Apps training area. As well, you've got access to the Chromebook SSL. We'll talk about SSL here in just a second. This will take you to information on installing SSL certificates if you're using some type of content filter that requires them. The Google Apps status page will let you know if things are down within the Google network. So if there are issues with Google Drive, Google Apps, uh, email, anything along those lines, you can find it there. And then I highly encourage you to take a look at the Enterprise blog. The Enterprise blog is where you can go and subscribe and get information about all the latest items that are coming down the pipe from Google Apps. And that's the end of our presentation portion of today. We'll be taking a look, diving in, and looking at some different types of things within the admin environment. So I've actually got open already. I've logged into my admin console of my Google Apps. So I've gone to admin.google.com, and I've logged in to my environment. Now, for us at MCNC, we have an environment where we've got some Chromebooks loaded into that are a test environment. Uh, we go through, test things out. We also, anytime we're working with districts with their Chromebooks or uh, content filters, we try to set them up to where we can do the exact same thing as you would do in your environment with our environment. 
So within our console, I've got my device management. And then you'll see that this is actually a little bit new look from the way that we had things initially. We can go to Chrome Devices and get access to our device settings. You can also go over on the left hand side to your network, mobile, and Chrome management. Now I'm going to go to my Chrome devices. One of the things that you can do is you can move your devices to different OUs within your organizational structure. So if I wanted to easily move Diane's Chromebook, I can move it over to the John Test OU if we needed to. Now, say you've ordered 500 Chromebooks. Those Chromebooks, you're going to deploy them out to a single school. You want to put those Chromebooks into that school OU so that you can do some device settings based upon the school. Now, if you do that, you'll have to go through, highlight all of them or individual ones that you need to move. Now, doing it through the graphical interface, that can take a lot of time to move those devices, move them into the OU structure, however you want to do it. Now, I'm going to show you some easier ways to do that here in just a few minutes. But for now, I'm going to take this one Chromebook here. I'm not going to take that one. I'm going to take, uh, well, since Gons is here, I'll take the one that's assigned to Gons. You know, it was last synced in 2012. So we haven't used this one very much, or it's one that um, has gotten damaged in some of our testing. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to move that one to my John Test organizational unit. And I'm going to tell it to go ahead and move that. It's moving the device, and if you had a lot of different devices that you were moving in this manner, this could take you a real long time to do so. Now, for now, I'm also going to take a look here over on the left-hand side. We've got several different new features that are available to you. By looking at it at your status, you have all devices, listing all of your devices based upon the OU that you're clicked on. You also have provisioned. Provision devices into your domain. And you'll notice that I still have my license key over here to where it shows how many licenses I have. I can also go to our deprovisioned. And we see that we have one device that's been deprovisioned from our domain. And then we have disabled. Anytime you have devices that you're going to send back to Google or your manufacturer of choice that need to be repaired, you're going to need to make sure that you de deprovision them from your domain because a lot of times they're not actually fixing your device. They're just putting a new one in a box and shipping it to you. So I've got this device here of Frank's. Oh, that one's been used. I'm going to grab this one right here of Chris's. I can take that Chromebook and go up into my more actions and tell it to deprovision that Chromebook. When I tell it to deprovision it, that takes it out of my Google Apps domain. So make sure anytime you send a device back to be repaired that you are deprovisioning it from your domain. Now we also have disable. We're going to talk more about the disable here in just a second, but you can go into your more actions and tell it that you want to disable that device as well. When you disable the device, it makes it not usable to anyone. Key feature here is the device has to be enabled or, excuse me, has to be provisioned into your domain, enrolled, in order for you to be able to de disable it. So I've talked about a couple of features that we need to go back and look at some different things. So if I go back to my device management and I go over to the Chrome management side, we've got the different settings. Now if I go to my device settings, we'll see some device settings that you can do for different types of devices. Now I highly encourage you to go through and set up an organizational unit called Disabled Devices. Now the reason I encourage you to set that up is because you can move devices into that disabled area so if they get lost, stolen, whatever the case may be, you can go down to the very bottom and we can tell it, give it disabled device instructions. Now, if you were to say, 
create different types of OUs for different things. So I've got a high school, middle school, whatever the case may be. All right, so I've got my tw 2015 students here. Now, use your imagination. I know everyone has one. So we're going to imagine that instead of student, this says high school, high school A. I could go to my high school A and put a different set of instructions than what I have further up. So I could go in, write those instructions, and be able to say, you know, hey, if this device is located, please return it to high school A and give the address. That works for whenever you disable a device, it will give those instructions for you. All right. Couple items, other items. Forced re enrollment. Anytime you get a device, as long as you're running ver Chrome OS version 35 or above, if somebody was to factory default their Chromebook, students, first thing they do, they get a device, first thing they do is Google how to factory default it. So if you're running Chrome OS version 35 and above, you can actually go in here and tell it to force re-enrollment. That way, if any students wipe the device, the only way they can get back on the device is to put in their credentials, their school, school credentials to get back on the device. Guest mode. Make sure you're setting this guest mode action. A lot of times we will restrict that to where they're not able to use guest mode. Sign-in restrictions. Make sure you're using your sign-in restrictions. Now for us, we do some testing with at gmail.com accounts, so we have that entered in. Most of the time, you're just going to have your domain and then your student domain listed into that sign-in restriction. So I get a lot of questions come the end of the year about user data on Chromebooks. One of the things I like to do is a week before school lets out is I'll go into the user data and I'll set that to erase all user data. That way every time a student logs into it and they log out of the device it automatically will wipe the data off of the device. This is basically your summer springtime cleanup of the machines. Auto update settings. So, auto updates can be a good thing for you. Now, ours are set up to allow auto updates, and we're not setting a restriction on the version for our for our updates. I highly encourage you to set it to a version that works for your environment. For instance, the latest version of Chrome just came out of Chrome OS. We've run into this issue where some districts that are running content filters, they'll come up with a white screen. Well, we have to go in and bypass a new site that we didn't know about for that new version. Well, if you update a couple of Chromebooks rather than all of them updating at one time, we'll be able to isolate it down a little bit easier rather than the panic of all devices not being able to log in or whatever the case may be for a issue that comes up with new versions. Highly encourage you once you know of a version that works only update to that version. So for instance 43 was the version that was out right before this new latest version so we'll restrict it to version 43 till we have time to test it on our Chromebooks and then load in the next version. For ours, we've got it set to no restriction so that we can uh, go ahead and get the latest versions and work with them. Now, remember, I'm inside of the device settings, so this is a matter of which OS you go to for that. All right, so the next thing. 
gonna go and scroll on down here for our device settings that's the main things that I wanted to discuss with you about now we're gonna go back to Chrome user settings a couple of new user settings that you're gonna want to know about one applying a wallpaper you can now apply a wallpaper based upon the OU of the user so back into my students 2015 say this was school high school a I could actually go to high school a and push a wallpaper to all of their students of a certain one that way um, we don't have yes we're taking away some of the custom out custom pieces that the students can set but this will in the long run help you out with maintaining your machines so we can set that go ahead and set that wallpaper as well if you're setting up online testing accounts highly encourage you to set up a special background for the online testing that way you can go in you know that you're logged into the testing account in order to take the test you'll know immediately that it's there because of the background So our forced installed force installed apps and extensions. Now, there's some new features that are coming out for this. You'll notice that it says they're new. Teachers can send Chrome apps directly to students with the Play for Education. This is being pushed out. If you are a Google Play for Education subscriber, then you can take advantage of this now in order to get that section turned on you've got to have at least one to two uh, tablets and en enrolled into your domain as well that would then give teachers access to being able to add in extra apps without it going through necessarily technology for it now for me we are force installing three apps on our student machines as soon as they log in Google Calendar calculator this is a special calculator that we like to use and then secure shell that way when anybody logs in that's inside of that OU they automatically get those now also underneath your allowed apps and extensions or blocked apps and extensions encourage you to block all apps and extensions except the ones that I allow now that is underneath Windows Mac Linux and Chromebook devices the reason that is is because if they're using your school login credentials if they log into the Chrome browser with their school credentials that will restrict the versions or the apps that they're allowed to get on their Chrome browsers as well so block all apps and extensions now you can go down and then say okay allow the apps and extensions the reason that I encourage you to block all apps and extensions except the ones that are allowed is because there's a lot of things that are coming out that aren't necessarily education related so one of the things that we go out and look at is proxies online proxies to being able to bypass content filters now depending upon your content filter it will bypass around those different types of things now for for us with MCNC most of those content most of those proxies that are inside the Chrome store we've tested and Zscaler does block those now another one that Uh, so I just do a quick search for bikini now for this maybe elementary students or high school students or whatever the case may be there's reasons that we want to block these apps and extensions from the students so you can see that they're not necessarily appropriate for education now there's more and more that are popping up every day of apps that people are creating and are pushing out so you can go in and add the apps that you want to be allowed inside of your domain so for instance I go search for calculator 
and we can find the calculator that best fits our educational needs to give to our students. Pan apps and extensions. You've got to be careful with this one. If you pan an app to the bottom, to their start menu down at the bottom, then that takes the customization away from the student to being able to add their, their pinned apps to the bottom. Now, if you're in a one-to-one -one environment or you're high school or whatever the case, you may want to let the students to customize their environment a little bit as far as the apps that they see down at the bottom. Now, if it's elementary, you may want to automatically pin those down for them. So the Chrome Web Store, you can set up your own Chrome Web Store based upon the OU. That way when the students are logged in and they go to the Chrome Store, that it gives them the apps that they're allowed to go ahead and get. Now anytime you set this up, you must also go in down here for the recommended apps and extensions and set those as well down here as well as up where you've set the allowed apps and extensions. If you don't set it in both places, they won't have access to it. Now again, this is in the recommended apps and extensions that will automatically show in your Chrome store. Under our user settings, we also have incognito mode. Now you'll notice that I'm using incognito mode right now because I log into multiple accounts. Students don't necessarily need to always log into multiple accounts. So I highly encourage you to disable the incognito mode for your students. Single sign-on. If you're utilizing single sign-on, such as Easy SSO or some other, some other type of single sign-on source, you can take advantage of now setting up your Chromebooks to log in via a single sign-on website. You can go in, set these options up whenever you're ready. Now, there's a couple of little things with the SSO piece that you'll be doing as well and we'll talk about those here in just a second proxy settings if you're utilizing zscaler or m86 or whatever the case to push out a pack file you can push out your pack files via this little link here set your proxy mode to always use to auto config and then set up your config your pack file down at the bottom. And I'm scrolling down, there's a piece that I wanted to show you down towards the bottom. In our user experience area, these are some new features that you can set up inside of user settings in the user experience. Managing their bookmarks. You can push bookmarks to the students now. Now, this is done from an admin level. This is not something that you can necessarily give out to each teacher to give, a to give them access to assigning what bookmarks they want for their students. It has to be done at an administrative level. So for that, you can go in, put in your bookmarks, put in the name of it, and tell it to add. So if I wanted to say, we're going to add our local news station, WREL, I could tell it to add that and add that in. Or if I wanted to add the MCNC website, I could add that in there. That way it will show across their bookmarks bar up at the top. Now you could also allow your students to enable their bookmark bar. You can also now disable their editing. Now this comes in handy with your elementary students. Kindergarten, first, second grade. A lot of times we've had schools to set up a generic profile 
that they're allowing those elementary school students to log in with. They log in with the generic profile and then we can stop them from adding custom bookmarks or doing anything else by adding the bookmarks manually up here for them, manage it for them, and then disable the bookmarks bar. Teacher sends you a list, you update it, and then push it out there to the Chromebook so that the next time the student logs in with the generic profile, it gets the bookmarks that they need to have for that day. All right, multiple sign-in access. New feature. New feature to allow you to stop students or whoever from logging into multiple accounts. Now, where does that come into play at? Basically, what you can do is if you enable this, block multiple sign-in access for users in that organization is they're no longer able to go up to the top and tell it to add another account so if you want your students to only use their Google Apps login for school you can stop them from going up adding account and adding their personal Gmail account or logging into their personal Gmail account now Notice that it says multiple sign-in will be disabled for users where SSL inspection certs are in effect. So if you're using Zscaler or if you're using Sophos or Lightspeed's uh, SSL inspection, then it's automatically going to be disabled for those accounts. All right, so that's just a few of the new settings that are inside of our Chrome area. Now, with the new look, there's a couple other things that I want to show you. One being in order to do your network settings. Now, they used to be listed underneath your Chrome management area. It's no longer there. We have to go back out to the device management and go underneath network, and then we have the certificates area there. Now here you can push out your Zscaler certificates or whatever type of certificates you may have. They're pushed at the root level and automatically applied to all users in your domain. Now here we actually we have all the Zscaler certificates still listed in ours, but the main one that you need to make sure that you have installed is your SHA-256. And here you see that one there, the 2042, that one is ours. Okay, so that's underneath device management, network, certificates to be able to get your SSL certificates installed. As well, if you're going to install, set up Wi-Fi networks. Now, you can set up Wi-Fi networks based upon the device or the users. Now, I encourage you to do it one way or the other. Set it up only underneath the staff or excuse me, underneath the user-based, or set it up underneath the device. Now here you see applied to devices for ours up top, and then we've got some that are applied to users. Now, if it's applied to both, we have seen it to where it flip-flops a lot. Not sure if it's getting confused or what, so I encourage you to set that only underneath one of the items, whether device or users all right so next thing we've talked about the device management the network the user settings everything like that now we started off today by going in and looking at our Chrome devices and how we could manage those things there now there's also another way that you can manage your devices that's going to make your life a whole lot easier as a Google spreadsheet, you can actually manage all of your Chromebook devices. Now here, I'm logged in as a super admin. You must have administrative rights over your domain. I'm setting up a new spreadsheet, and I'm going to call this K12 G Apps CB Management. This is just our K12 G Apps Chromebook Management. Okay. Now there's an add-on that you can take advantage of called Chromebook Inventory. 
Now to get it, you go out to your add-ons and go to get add-ons and you can search for Chromebook. Now this one is produced by the New Visions Cloud Lab out of New York. Uh, Andrew Stillman is one of the creators of it and has done a great job with being able to give this to education to where you can take advantage of it. It is offered free of charge. There's no charge for it and you can click on it and then tell it you want to add it to your you can add it to your spreadsheet. Now for me I've already got it installed so the next thing that I've got to do is go up to add-ons Chromebook inventory and then it asks you to export devices or update devices from sheet. Now I wish the export devices was a little bit better name. This is actually getting devices from your Google Admin console. So here I'm going to say export devices pops up asking me which organizational unit would you like to get the devices from? Well, I'm going to tell it to start in the forward slash and then I want you to include all sub orgs. Now if you only wanted to get it for just a certain organizational unit you could. For me here I want to get it from the root level and all devices especially any that have been enrolled. Now you could tell it you only wanted to get the recent ones if you wanted to. Export the sheet. It automatically sets up your spreadsheet for you to be able to see the different devices. Now for me, we only have about 13 devices in here. 11 devices inside of our, our console. If you have thousands of them, this is going to take a little bit longer for it to read the data in for you. Everything over on the left hand side can be edited in mass. So you can update different pieces of the puzzle to where it will automatically, you can push it back up to your Chromebook settings. The right hand side, these are items that are maintained by Google. You cannot update this section. But you can view. So for instance, I can see with this Chromebook, the la recent users were NC Ren Test at K12G Apps and Diane. And then there's another one that Diane's logged into down here. So there's a couple of different things that we can see. We can see the active time. Let's expand this out just a little bit. The active time ranges, we can see it was active for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 7 minutes. 166 minutes, 40 minutes on down the line. So you can see some information there. We also get the serial numbers. If you're doing MAC authentication, you can get the MAC address for your wireless networks. Now this is relatively new. So these that have not been activated in a while or used in a while, we don't have the MAC addresses for those. The platform version, the whether it's on stable build or not and the different pieces of the information. You can go over and see the status. They're active, shipped, whatever the case may be. Your last enrollment, the last time that the Chromebook was enrolled onto your domain. You also see the model Chromebook. Expand these out here so that they're not jumbled over top. You can see the Chromebook versions. Now these don't always come in with the exact type of Chromebook that they are. You can also see the last time they were synced. And the most important version for me, or information for me, is the Chrome OS version. Now this will tell you, are you running version 35 or not? So you want to check this to make sure that you've got that information in there. And the boot mode. Now we're We've got one that's booting into a development mode. That's one that we test with. So the others are in verified mode. Now, you can update these different pieces to put them in whatever type of situation that you want to do. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to my admin console. Oh, got to log back in. If you've been logged in for one hour, you have to go back in and re-authenticate. Alright, so I'm going to go into Users, and I'm going to set up an OU called Disabled Devices. Add a sub-org. And 
and I'm going to create that at the root level. Now if I go back over to my spreadsheet, I'm not going to have that as an option inside of here yet because it did not have that before. So if I go back to my add-ons and tell it to export the devices again, it's going to re-update the information and pulls it in. So I've got a couple of Chromebooks. I don't know where they're at. They haven't been used in a while and everything along those lines. So we're going to see those that were last synced 2012. For instance, this one of Gonzo's. I am want to move it, and I want to put it in the disabled devices. This other one, we haven't seen those in a while, or they've not been used, whatever the case. We're going to disable those different devices. Now, I know David doesn't necessarily use this one now because he has another one, so we can go ahead and disable it. Those others there, they've been logged in 2015, so I'm good with those. Uh, this one here, this one actually has a cracked screen, so I know it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it as disabled. And I'm going to take out the annotated user, and I'm going to tell it that this one has a cracked screen. You can update this information. The location, you can update those being school A, B, C, whatever. Or maybe I want to say missing. You can also put in asset IDs. Asset ID here will be your asset ID that you have. So your tag number if you have a tag number for your school. Frank is no longer with us so I'm going to remove that. And the last time that it was logged in is there so I'm going to actually say I know this one is actually in the C&E department as a test machine. That one there, that is correct, it's logged in as John. We're actually going to move it to the John test area. So I've made a lot of different types of changes inside of here. I can go ahead and take that out as well. So I've made a lot of changes. I need to push that back up to Google. I'm going to put my tag number in there, just making up one. I can push this information back up to Google. So I go back to my add-ons and tell it to update the devices from the sheet. So it pushes the information back up to Google. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and push that information up. Chrome, 10 Chrome devices were updated in the inventory. So I say OK. Now if I go back over to my admin console and I'm going to go down to the John test where I know there's some at or the disabled devices. Go back down to my device management, my Chrome devices. You'll notice that my number of items in the root OU have gone down. If I go down to John test, I've got that one device. And you'll notice that it has the asset number that I put in. As well, it also has my machine in the notes. We can also go to our disabled devices, and we see all of those devices, notes that are there, the location, if we had any other pieces, that would automatically be there with it. Now, an easy way to update all of your devices at one time without having to go individual devices to type it in. So instead of going here to my custom fields to edit, I can actually do it all straight from the Google spreadsheet. So our disabled devices. Then if we go set an OU on there or a policy on that OU to say all of these devices are missing, mark them as missing. So we've gone through a good bit, and again, that add-on is called Chromebook Inventory, and I'll make sure I put that in the notes for today, so if you're interested in going taking advantage of that, you can. We've gone through a lot of things, and I just want to open up the floor to see if there's any questions at this time. And we've got the screen up here. I'm putting back up the presentation. The 
webinar st pieces will be posted online. The archive version will be posted at the CNE webinar site. Highly encourage you to visit there as well. Fill out a survey for us to let us know how we're doing with the summer webinar series. Now we're getting closer to the fall, so that actually be changing from summer summer webinar series to just a standard webinar series. We've got a lot of great things that are going to be coming down the line here in the near future. Any questions? All right, so that's going to wrap up today's Chromebook management webinar. Uh, this is probably one of your shorter webinars, but that's okay. Gives you back a few minutes to get some things done, get you another cup of coffee. Again, visit the CNE webinars and let us know if there's any other webinars that you'd be interested in seeing. Thank you and look forward to talking with you again soon.